Welcome to Bahama Rico. I am your co-host, Timmy. I am Brian Fonseca. Uh, I am going to have two eyes on this program, but I'm also going to be paying a little bit of attention because at the time we're recording this, Cuba is playing Puerto Rico, uh, Timmy. Mm. A lot of fires. We're talking about the Bahamas. Bahamas got a big win the other day, bro. Second win. In FIBA history, second yes. in history, we yes. beat the U.S. Virgin Islands by 12 points. We beat the Dominican Republic this week, and hopefully we get that so we could finally make our first oh, they're, they're, Olympics. They're beating, they're, beating, they're beating your ass right now. <laughs> 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 I just checked the score, DR, you know, but hey, uh, you beat the Virgin Islands by yeah. double digits. That matters. Um, and, and, and round one will end in June, July, so you just got to keep it going. For us, we, be we better fucking beat Cuba. No offense <laughs> to all the Cubans out there or whatever. We have the 19th ranked team in the country, according to FIBA, and Cuba's 65 or 63 or something along those lines. I am not trying to lose to Cuba, uh, you know, in that. Yeah. Even though we're in Havana, like, we're a top 20 team, damn it. We have a new coach. Like, I'm not trying to do this. So at the time of we're recording this, Puerto Rico's winning. That's all I want to say. But joining us this week... On the Bahama Rican boys, Timmy's banging the table because we're very excited. One time he did that so hard that his power the mic, the, the his, mic got out. Yeah, his mic <laughs> cut out, so he got to do a tap. I could do it a little bit harder because my table's pretty sturdy. But joining us is the conversation coordinator, of Five Reasons Sports Network, also co-host of Who Spaces? Spaces, who's Paces, Paces and Spaces, Paces, Paces and Spaces, Paces, 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 Paces. Yeah. There's so many fucking spaces with hoops and paces and all this shit. But Tony Schwartz is here. We're happy to have you, Tony. Um, you got the you got the glasses going, the backwards hat. He, he you know got the, I mean? the blurred background, you know. You like the blurred background. And look, and if you look cool. over in the corner there, I got some romantic mood lighting happening too. <laughs> yeah, I see, I see a candle. Absolutely, uh, you, it's all set off for you boys. You, Tony you also, Schwarzenegger. You also said that uh over I don't know if uh whatever, I will just we'll just do it since we're here. You also said that you may or may not uh be drinking after this, just you know. Just I cannot, out. Con- I cannot confirm having, or deny the bottle of Sauvignon good. that's waiting for me out there. I cannot yeah. confirm or deny. Yo, Sunday night wine. I understand. I'm not a drinker, Absolutely. but look, Timmy, I, like this. I is scared your- for baby show. I'm like four Jack Daniels in, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I told <laughs> Tony. I told you. I was like, yo, Timmy's drank wine on this on this show before. <laughs> I, I, I made the joke, Timmy. Right I was. I was like, all of us, we're just going to do some shots and then talk about the heat. And whatever happens, happens. And he's like, well, we might. I mean, say la vie. Whatever happens. I mean, with the week that the Heat are about to have, I guess we'll get to it right now. You might now. need a strong drink for this week. You, 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 might, you might need some drinks because there's going to be some tough games. So let's start here, everybody. Um, the Miami Heat schedule this week, it's going to be a kind of a motherfucker. And uh, Kyle Lowry is going to be out on Monday due to personal reasons. Uh, he was out earlier this season I just hope for two it's weeks. Like two, two weeks again. I uh, Whatever it is, I hope he takes care of it. Um you know, uh, if if that's even how that works, right? Like, we don't even yeah, know what the situation what is, is, right? Yeah. So it, it may be something that lingers on, but, you know, he 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 should take all the time he needs. And uh, I think it's great that it hasn't even gotten out why that is. You know what that's I mean? Important. I think it says a lot it, about... It's crazy how, how Lock and Key, the Heat organization, is like, nothing comes out. Like, I remember when Gerald Green got knocked out in the lobby, and it took, like, five months for us to find out and it was and like it was like a random hotel clerk who leaked the story that Gerald Green got like knocked out in the lobby, and that's why he missed the game. I don't you know? remember that story. Yeah, so Ger- when Gerald yeah. Green played there, yeah, the only thing said what the Heat said was that he was excused. There are parts of that he was passed out in the lobby, and there was blood. So Twitter was thinking there was maybe drugs or something like whatever, and the Heat would not comment. It came out like two months later that he got in a fight in the lobby and got knocked the fuck out. But the okay. Heat did not wow. did not mention at all. And I, like so, nothing comes out at all unless the player says like nothing. Comes out. Ethan talks all the time about that Mike Miller back injury and how they just yeah. called it you know lower back injury and it was Mike was like yeah man no, this thing is not getting better. Yeah, it's not getting better. Yeah. So uh, the schedule this week, you see it right there going at the ticker. On the bottom there, Monday home against Chicago Bulls, Wednesday at Milwaukee, Thursday at the Brooklyn Nets, who may or may not have Kyrie Irving soon. Who cares? Crime is up in New York City, and y'all only care about Eric Adams, whether or not he's going to allow Kyrie Irving to play. And then Saturday, they're going to play the Philadelphia 76ers. So the Heat have the Bulls, Bucks, Nets, back-to-back, and then the Mm. Sixers at home to end the week. So that is four games in six days against 
the, the top contenders, five like, of the top six teams in the in the East. Yes, like these are these are the other top teams in the East. With you know, a shout out to the Boston Celtics, I suppose. Um, at the time we're recording this, they're also losing to the Indiana Pacers. So, guys, um, no, that's good. Tony, go, let's start with you since you're our guest. Like, uh, what do you? Two things. One, what is your preferred outcome? Like, what is it that would be most encouraging to you this week for them? To, to sort of demonstrate as it pertains to wins and losses the, or the just gauntlet. overall performance? And then two, uh, what are you expecting if it's different from that? My, my analysis is always from a macro point of view, right? I'm never the micro guy. We're going to get into that, that later. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. We, uh, I think that the Miami Heat have realistically set themselves up for success no matter how they come out of this four-game stretch. I mean, you don't want to see them absolutely get lamb-blasted um, if they can split, that's a miracle inside of itself, especially playing two back to backs. If we split over the course of 15 games, that'll be a nine and six record. So the last 15 will be nine and six. All right. That means we went, you know, uh, seven and what, four up until this point. So they're in a really good position to go into the back end of the season where the schedule is super easy and we have a bunch of home games. Uh, and really solidify that first seed. I think fans are going to live and die by what happens over the course of these next four games, and every take is going to be spewed. We should have traded for a forward deadline, blah, blah. Everything's going to come out. But in reality, these four games are a measuring stick, but it's not as important but, but as people But it's also a measuring stick for those teams as well. Like It's not just like one side. Yeah, absolutely. These teams are also measuring us. We're, we're the top dog. They're also going to see... Are we for real? Are we for and they and and like Jimmy said, teams the teams themselves they know it's a dog fight, regardless of what the media says. The basketball players who play the game know the heat, you will feel them. So, I think it's also these teams are trying to measure up to us, yeah. And look, Timmy, last time I checked, we're a higher seed than all those other teams. I mean, they've yep. got a lot more to play for right now than we do. Um, saying that it's a super veteran team, they all have respect on their minds and they want to beat these guys. But if if we could split. I'm I'm happy if we don't. It it doesn't mean that much. We're we're, <laughs> we're gonna still have a home seat going into the playoffs, you know. So for me, I um I'm not really worried about Larry missing tomorrow. Um, Ao is not like some type of big super point guard we need Larry for. They exactly. they don't run their offense through their point guard. It's basically DeRozan murdering you from the from the uh, mid range and some Fuchs and some uh uh um Levine. Uh, so I think that tomorrow is gonna be a, a nice game game game, you know. Um, the Bucks tonight are, at the time we're at the time. Yeah, tonight. Um, mm-hmm. the, the Bucks. Um, it's interesting. Um, their their shooting guard spot has given them nothing in the last week. After trading De Vincenzo and um, Pat Connaughton's injury, they I I watch all this. I'm a big fantasy guy. Their shooting guards have given them a, a total of like nine points per game. That's like four guys. <laughs> Not shooting well points. either. Yeah, so their shooting guard is. So I see they're talking to Tyree Evans right now. They aren't playing George Hill, Wesley Matthews is on his last legs. Um, Javon Carter is there for defense. Uh, Grayson Allen is doing nothing, so like they're really hurting for that two guard spot. Um, Porter's had a career high eight threes last night, but we 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 do well with shooting bigs. I'm not really terrified of the Bucks. I'm just curious because I, I always have to see a good Giannis and Bam fight. The Nets most likely Durant will be back. Um, they said he will return this week, so Durant will probably be back. Um, we saw last night. We, this is, that Bam was a game winner against the Nets this year, so like I'm, I'd love to see that. Um, Kari probably won't be able to. Kari will not won't be. Kari won't be be playing a a, a, a home game this week. Um, and, and of course, Goji Goji returns as a player, so that's gonna be kind of cool. Um, and then the last game was the Sixers. Who I watched a game earlier today. Uh, Harden and Harden and Embiid are getting their chemistry again, so that's a good measuring stick for us. But I mean, like you said, regardless of what happens, we're still gonna be at, at worst the, the number two seed. Like you know, and then I will get too far ourselves. But next week. Is when people returns, but we'll say that for later. Say that for later. Say that for later. Is anything less than three and one a disappointment over these four games? To who? To me or to yes. them? To the, the Twitter fans? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a good. That's a good. Like, that's a good <laughs> distinction. I, 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 but I would say for you, for the people in this in this room right here, virtual. Room. I'm I'm good. They could go one and three, and I, I and I'm good. I think you have realistically, you might have two scheduled losses in there, especially if those back to backs we don't play well in back to backs. Yeah, yeah. one back to back this week. One back to back this week. But but what I'm saying, and then you have Kyle out uh, going into this next game. So 
Yeah. So much of what we do is predicated on Kyle Lowry. When he's not on the floor, the team doesn't look as good. That doesn't mean we can't win games. It just – it kind of feels like, the, you know, we could drop three in this, but it doesn't change our standing or our positioning yeah. right now. So. Yeah, if, if Kyle doesn't play one or two two or three more games, I do not expect us to go two or two or three and one. But it's yeah. fine because it's not like we know we know our team. We've seen what the team could do over the last two weeks, fully healthy or, I guess, as healthy as we can be without deep and Morris. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna panic if we if we go zero and four. I still might not panic because, like I say, you know we we know who this team is. They know who they it's are. gonna it's gonna suck. Like don't get it's gonna suck, and I'm gonna be super depressed. And that wine bottle might turn into three by the end of that week. But I mean, you got Depot coming back. You have Kyle eventually returning. Like everything, kind of balances itself out. The thing that's interesting is that they have two two of those games at home. Bulls yeah. tonight. And then later this week, uh, Philadelphia, you'd obviously want to see them win both of those. I will note that while Philadelphia, we're obviously raving about them now, they've played the Minnesota Timberwolves, who, are, who were on the second of a back-to-back, and they played the New York Knicks, who yeah, well, just yeah. don't have their shit together right now. So, you know, we'll see what happens that Saturday. They The back-to-back is the interesting thing, right? Because, I, I and I do think without Kyle Lowry, like, I, I still think you should beat the Bulls. Like, I still think Fox. we should just beat Fox. the Bulls, right? Fox. Like, should. We'll see. Um, Milwaukee Bucks um, Wednesday, that's an interesting one. And then the day after, on a back-to-back, you're going to Brooklyn, where they're going to have Kevin Durant. Brooklyn, two days before, they'll be in Canada, but they'll be rested. They have a rest game. of. I mean, they have a day of rest before that. The Heat will be on the back-to-back. So that's sort of a trap game there. Um, look. I think if you go into that two and zero, oh, then you could break. You could probably split the next two, and you'll be fine. And the other component of the scheduling thing is that when you look a little bit further down, and you don't want to, you know, get too far ahead of yourselves. And ideally, you'd have Kyle at some point this week, but you know, we'll see how that situation sort of unfolds, right? Because he has to take care of some personal stuff. But after that, you have the four games day off. You have the Houston Rockets next to Monday to at home. Turn of Depot. A lot of home games. That's when you're expecting all the people back. You have the Phoenix Suns, who are not going to have Chris Paul next but week. I'll be at that game. I'll yes, that two game. days later. Oh, okay. uh, DeAndre Ayton will be in Miami, so Timmy will be there. Mm-hmm. Come hell or high <laughs> water. Uh, you got the Cleveland Cavaliers two days after that at home. That's going to be an interesting match. Listen, Garland and Rondo and Levert. But Laurie Markin is back. Yeah, um, and he's, he's open. Yeah. Is Levert going to be – is Levert still going to be out? Yeah, they said two weeks. Two weeks minimum. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And then the second day is a back-to-back. You have uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves. So basically, you're looking at something along the lines of seven games in 13 days or eight games in 13 days or seven games in 12 days, something along the lines like that. But it's crazy. So, But, Tony, you're you're chilling, right? Like, you're not you're, – you're looking at everything from a macro, uh, macro perspective here? Yeah, I mean, we'll break it down after the stretch about how what the team's position is. I don't let me not spew heat culture, you guys, really quickly. I'm just saying, if they lose, look, look, whatever, I'm, it's cool. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the born and raised. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm mm-hmm. not. Timmy is. You know, I, I, well, <laughs> I'm also very I, rational. So. Yeah. I, I see him in the jersey right now, and I kind of feel like he one up me. I really should have put my Tyler jersey on. <laughs> I, I mean, I sip the Kool Aid, bro. I we want should. a good dollar. Oh wow, that's a good dollar jersey. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. you could you can you could keep the Iguodala. Thing. I, <laughs> hey, you said you said earlier, uh, you know, Wesley Matthews doesn't have his legs. He might have his legs. They just left on the court in Milwaukee after Kyrie <laughs> snatched them things from him. Um, look, we should beat Chicago. You're absolutely right. We should, but I mean, Chicago gets out and running. This team doesn't play well in transition. I can see it, but we should beat them. Milwaukee's still weird without Lopez in their lineup or just inserting him. It's that like they're. Like you said, they don't have a lot of shooting guard depth. They're all over the place. Nets, no Kyrie. They still don't have any interior defense. I'm cool with them. And Philly is figuring stuff out. There's a world where we go 4-0 and over this. Like, there yeah. really is. Yeah. We can win all four. Especially but if, if we don't. Especially if going to do those things that he was well, starting I'm to do. I'm doing disgusting like, things. Listen, nasty listen, things. Nasty. Listen. And you know he I, hates the Nets, too. I have yeah, it. I, despises look. them. Yeah, more than I do, apparently. Um, Look, all I'm going to say is that, like, I have not yet hit some of my uh, group chats who, because I've been talking up Bam since he was in Kentucky, basically, right? I'm not hitting my group chats yet. I'm just, I'm just going to let them come to me. 
I don't want to say I told you so or any of that shit yet, but you see the things that he was doing against, not even just San Antonio, but just over the stretch, last 10, it's, 12, it's, it's, 11, games. it's 11 games now. Like, it's, it's no big, longer just a blip. It's, a, it's him now. It's, it's him. And, and here's the thing. I want to get your guys' thoughts on this. This is what he's been doing, but amplified, right? Like, he has already shown these different skill sets of being able to create baskets and get to the rim and get around people that you feel like he should be dominating, like, He's already done these things. It's just a matter of doing them consistently, which is what people have been getting night. on his ass about. Yeah, and I feel night. like now you're starting to see that leap, which is going back to the macro conversation, which we'll touch more on in a second. Bam is like 24 years old, so you kind of got to give some dudes time <laughs> in order to get to that level, right? And he's only in year five. So, yeah, that's all I got to say about that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I love – my one knock was uh, – I, I like I hate to see him either hesitant or deferring, like, but no one could guard you. Nobody and I and I and he I think he's heard it and he's block a shot, steal the ball, defense like he had he had Randall in jail. Um, oh yeah, he had Randall in jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and, and, and it's not even just it's it's not even just the the, the deference occasionally. That's the word. Yeah, yeah, deference, the deference, yeah, deference, yeah. whatever. Yeah. I didn't use it in my book. All right, so, <laughs> <yeah>. um, <laughs> sixty five thousand words in it. There wasn't one of them, but like it's not even just that. It's also who he defers to. I think that annoys people because there's uh, the whole Duncan Robinson component of this, which we talked to Sean Ro- Rochester about last week. Timmy, do you have any thoughts on any of this Bam uh, stuff that we're, we've been getting into? Obviously, you've you've shown Bam love on the timeline, but like, what are you seeing, and do you think it's sustainable? Me or Tony? Tony. Uh, it's absolutely sustainable. It's what he's always been able to do, and is now just choosing to be the point of attack for us on, on offense as opposed to you know, getting the ball in the post and making decisions. It's what I loved about when Kyle Lowry came here for Bam. It just let him think less. You know, if Bam's rolling, uh, setting a pick for Kyle, and he's he's rolling to the basket, he has to make two reads. He has to read his man. He has to read the hedge defender and then decide what he wants to do if the ball comes to him, right? Defender goes over the screen on Kyle. Ball's coming to him. What am I doing? One, two, three, quick, easy, right? Now, Bam is getting the ball. And instead of looking for DHO actions or free-flowing actions, Bam stepping up into that high post and starting to break his defender down, which I think is what we've always wanted to see. Mm -hmm. Right now, Tyler, Jimmy, and Bam, for their positions, are all in the 93rd or higher percentile for usage rating, okay? Which means that we got three guys that rank in the top 10 percentile for usage and creation. Three guys that don't play on the floor at the same time. We can stagger all three of these dudes around. We have lineup versatility for creation, for defense, for playmaking, for shot making, all up and down this team, all up and down, all up and down now. And this is what makes me so excited for the return of Victor Oladipo, even if he's just a rotational piece. Now we can go one to eight. We can play switch. We can play zone. We can play man. We can play drop. It really doesn't make a difference. We can do everything. And all those dudes can fucking score. So, like, as as I look at this squad, I get excited. I'm super happy Bam is aggressive. We don't – we uh, Ethan will tell you we need aggressive Bam to win games. I don't feel that way. I think that there's a lot of different ways we can win games. But when Bam is gone, it's the best option we have, all right? I don't think Jimmy takes over games as much as he used to. And I think Bam will always have the best mismatch on the floor night in, night out, as long as he isn't playing Joel Embiid. Or, or Jokic. Yeah. Um, I don't think we got to worry about Jokic in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, facts, fair point. Facts, facts. Um, now, going on to more macro stuff. Uh, Tony, we, we talked about <laughs> some, of the <laughs> some of the fan reactions to stuff earlier this week. <laughs> I don't remember what the, con- what the conversation was that we ended up having our side conversation over. If you remember, please feel free. But, like... It, w- it actually may have been this BAM discussion. Like, it may have been the it was of uh, It was attempts. We, the, people, were, people were talking about the attempts, the specific number of attempts that BAM should have yeah. in order for the team to be successful. Yeah, and I think Greg on a recent five on the floor made a good point where it's like, I, I don't remember. It might Just three more. Game, Just three more. Just three more. Where, where it's like, he said, like, I think he said this, where he said that he had 10 field goal attempts, but he also kept getting to the free throw line and, was able mm-hmm. to impact the game in a myriad of ways. For me, it's not so much about field goal attempts as it's about like just when you're watching the game, is he 
being too passive or whatever the case may be. Um, Because I do think that while you don't need aggressive Bam to win games, you may need aggressive Bam to win a championship. Now, that doesn't mean take 20 shots. That means like, you know, sort of a, a nice a nice volume of whatever. The main thing you need is this defense, though, like above all else. But anyway, the macro conversation, Tony, uh, just <laughs> you're obviously very connected to the Heat fan base, and I'm finding that there are very, very interesting people uh, just all over the place. Here. Interesting. And, yeah, and, that's the word. And on a play-to-play basis, it is very archaic uh, and chaotic and hectic, but just – I well, mean, we were trading. Looking, we were trading the team at halftime last night. You remember that? I, yeah. And here's the thing. It was funny because, like, I wasn't even like paying too much attention to the game until later on because you know, doing other things. But like, I just don't. I I fight this all the time where it's like a lot of people just see, especially basketball now, because Twitter incentivizes you to look at things in a micro perspective on a play to play perspective. Whereas everyone here is trying to be level headed and look at this from the macro because one of 82 is just one of 82. So Tony, take it away from here. Just how are you able to compartmentalize and keep your sanity? Yeah. Yeah. And keep your sanity. And what is the importance of doing that? Because it does feel like, not just Heat fans, but just NBA fans in general, and you talk to a lot of them, just worry too damn much about everything on a day-to-day basis. I, I don't know how deep this is going to get here, but I think oh, the, way you, the way that you keep your sanity is to rationalize that people are reacting based off of like societal and cultural pressures to react that way. You know, the, the dude that goes... I remember uh, at trade deadline saying, I just don't think anything's going to happen. I don't think there's any moves for us to make just rationally keeping the continuity of the team might be more important than shaking it up for a lateral move. Um, and I got killed. I got killed. <laughs> for uh, that? Yeah, I got killed. <laughs> and I got killed not, not because of that take, right? Because that take you can say is right or wrong. I got killed because the narrative at the time, the moving narrative on Twitter was we had to get a four. We had to. We had to or we're not going to win a championship. So that's what I was countered with. Nothing about my take or, you know, where it was right or wrong. Just that, that narrative. We need a four. We We need a four. four. It was there all day, you know? So this, it's kind of the zeitgeist, you know? And he Twitter is so, and Timmy, you you can speak to this, man. He Twitter is so fucking funny. They are so funny, bro. And everybody, everybody's so good at what they do. Um, But I feel like, as a society now, we chase we chase that funny and we chase those interactions with that funny so much that we lose, you know, the pieces that brought us here in the first place. Like we're looking to break down uh, a basketball team, project their future, discuss them in the micro, but keeping the macro view. That That's always the journalist responsibility. Right. That's always what they're supposed to do and again, give a voice to the player. Um, those are the two things that like, I, I feel like journalistic integrity are structured on. So that's how I kind of structure my analysis the same way. I'm trying to make sure that I don't lose the human element of what's happening on the floor. And I keep a wide vision on everything that's happening. And when people get crazy and they start doing the, the, the nonsense, I always go, that's not them. You know what I mean? This is like, this is what they think they're supposed to say, what they think they're supposed to do, because this is what gets the interactions and the likes and, and this and is like, what all their favorite accounts do I, I i was getting that so you know be, before skip bayless used to was to bully lebron there was the <laughs> ring, rings rings was never like a thing it right never, we never i remember back in primary school high school you're talking basketball you didn't care that team mark didn't win a ring you didn't care that vince Carter. you just cared that he used to score on the points and dug the ball but after skip bayless and the other talking heads are talking about rings 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 rings, rings. Either now you're, you're only you're only a goat or trash. There's no in between. I think basketball Twitter is missing a lot of great players because um, a lot of players like look at Aldridge, who made like seven All Stars, was the only player to average twenty four and nine for like five seasons. He's mm-hmm. gonna be forgotten because he didn't win a ring. Like I, that's what I hate about the the, the conversation on Twitter. A lot of great players are being missed because bro, like, Rudy never- Gay. Rudy Gay is a forgotten basketball yeah. player, and he is a phenomenal talent. And he's been in the league for fifty years, bro. It's incredible. <laughs> I mean, 
Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to unpack here because you you did say that you weren't. You don't know how deep this is going to go, and it got pretty deep. But I do think that there's a lot to what you're saying in terms of just general reactions to things and how you are incentivized to react quickly. Because again, like everyone is chasing that funny, everyone's chasing that high. I mean, there's a lot of just blend here from like how fans react possession by possession uh, versus just how people are on a day to day basis now with social media. Like exactly. they have to post, they have to do this. I remember like, so I just started a TikTok account and somebody I know who's gotten like 10,000 whatever followers on there. And I only got on TikTok for work purposes. Like I was literally encouraged by people that I work with, who I make money with. And they're like, yo, you should get on TikTok just as an extra avenue to pump out your shit. My whole thing was like, dog, do I want another fucking social media platform? <laughs> like another one? I need another, another one. one of these shits. Like this shit, like get the fuck out of here. But whatever, I did it. Um, That's what I was thinking. I didn't tell them that. I was just having this internal conflict. Make a long story less long. Uh, This girl, my friend, she was like, all right, so to build a following on TikTok, as if I don't know how to fucking do that on any social platform, right? To build a following on TikTok, uh, you know, post twice a day, three times a day, whatever. And I, I, stop right there. All right. Like th that's where we are now, where we feel like as people, we're supposed to contribute to something two, three times a day. A there day. are people that don't. Yeah. Me and Timmy talk about this. There are people that they can't go an entire day without tweeting. There are people that can't go an entire day without just checking whatever app, whatever it is. And I think that constant stimulus, stimuli, whatever, uh, like it really fucks with people's heads. And then for the sports thing, the also the elephant in the room is a lot of people just may not, may not just like where they are. And they're like, no, sports is my reprieve. Like, I just want to use this as my escape and overreact to everything on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think that could be dangerous as well. Because like, they, yo, that's, that's what you got to find control. some hobbies, bro. Like yeah. that's the other thing. Yeah. <laughs> It depends book. on it. De it depends on intent. It depends on what the intent of it is, right? Because you'll have people who will get super vile and critical and brutal and be like, "Bro, it's just Twitter," and it's like, it that's it's not. Sometimes it isn't just Twitter. Sometimes your intent is to be an asshole and to harm somebody and to be mean. Like, <laughs> right. you can't just you can't just be a dick and then go, bro, it's just Twitter. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, but you were a dick. Like that was your intent. Like that's what you were. <laughs> That's what you were trying to do. Yeah. So, when you got the reaction you're looking for. Yeah, this is yeah. what you wanted. Yeah. This is what you wanted. So, at the for me, at the end of the day, it's not me attacking people, right? Because I these people are also enable every single fucking thing I do, and I'm so thankful for the interactions and the conversations and the people that I've met and networked with me and you guys. I'm kind of a fan of your show, honestly. Thank uh, you. Appreciate it. And and y'all known that since probably day one when I was hyping the shit out of you in the retweets. So, uh, so that th these are the kind of you guys are the kind of people I meet, good people through Twitter and and interactions. So it's not about attacking people. It's just more recognizing like not the symptoms, but the source of the problem, right? And the source of the problem is just that quick that quick pace and and the chase. They're chasing. They're chasing a high, chasing a funny. And we all do it, but it's a point where you have to choose to like. You can't be logged in 24 7. Like, we can't be at the second minute of a heat game being like, yo, fucking Pat, Jesus Christ, trade everybody. Like, <laughs> like we got four quarters, bro. Like, relax. <laughs> like, let's play it out. And it's deeper than that, too, because what I'm I, like, I'm also not even talking about one specific group. I'm just saying, like, everybody societally, like, this is kind of what it is at this point. And it's like, you also have to, everyone has to check themselves. When they're like two in their phone too much, like I was too I'm, bro. Yeah. I was two eighty. I was two eighty three years ago. Okay, no like four pounds? years ago. You mean yeah, two hundred eighty okay. pounds, bro. I look at myself all the time and go like, damn man, I'm so fat. You know what I mean? All the time. So the we don't even recognize how social media impacts us. Like we don't even really feel it. It's just there because how we we just touch it every single day and it fucks with the mental. And and you have to really really isolate what is societal and cultural and what and is real. like action yeah yes exactly bro what's real yeah yeah all right before uh some people start you know fucking crying <laughs> while <laughs> listening to the show let's let's go let's go to some non-sports stuff timmy uh i know i know we we haven't i don't think we did music last week with sean 
Yeah, we but do, uh, yeah. we we we're we're gonna do that. We're gonna do so, our this or that. So I'll start. We're gonna do our this or that, but we're gonna yeah. do our music stuff first. Yeah. Um, me. but so I, I just wanted to know what what, what you guys are looking forward to music wise. No, Bane the Butcher drops next week. Time to talk three. The butcher coming, nigga. Can I say something real quick? Actually, Go did ahead. y'all listen to Conway's album that came out Friday? I'm going yes. to tomorrow. T- Tony, what do you think? Um, are you I a Griselda guy? First of all. I like, yeah, I am, and but it's like it's not every song, right? And Con Conway, sometimes I have to let that album sit for a while. Like I was listening to it in the car driving to work, and I'm like, I don't think this is in the car driving to work music. Like I don't, <laughs> I, don't I don't know if these it is, is in New person. York. I'm I know, I feel now. that, I feel that, but I'm in it the sticks over here. <laughs> I'm in the sticks, bro. I'm in Ocala, okay? So I'm just like. <laughs> I'm like, damn man, I would really like to listen to Save My Save Your Tears or like some of the weekend, something, but yeah. uh, I'm gonna give it another go. I'm really excited for Benny. Anything Benny puts out, I yes. love. I love, love. Um I'm excited for that too. Oh, can I, I say this about the Conway album? Timmy, you haven't heard it yet, but like I, I I'm with Tony. I need to give it another listen. Mm-hmm. I just I, I didn't enjoy it as much as uh the you know La Machina and uh what was it? God forgives I don't. That came out before that, like, or was that the name of the album that came out this past week? I'm that that was, I think that's the name of the album that just came out. I'll look it up while you're going. Yeah. So, oh, from King Do a God. That's the one I'm thinking of because mm-hmm. I love that album. So it didn't resonate with me in the same way. I need to go back to it and listen to it. There were a few songs that I liked, but I was like, huh, I like I listened to, to the Benny song because Greg posted it in the chat. Yeah. But I listened listen to the whole album. I want to listen to. I want to give it another, another, another listen. I, I will anyway because it's fucking Conway and I really like Conway. But I don't know. Maybe it's because I was like, what I was doing at the time. I want to hear it again and give it a, a fair shake. Because I think y'all so are Greg, like, me. don't kill me. All right, like, oh, he's he's killing us. He's if killing he really us. likes I'm, the album. <laughs> I'm I'm already getting flamed daily for that push of T take. Look, I mean, this is an <laughs> album. This is an album made for all of us, right? Like, we all got the same similar music taste. I mean, you got Ross Siegel. You've got T.I., you know, you got Benny. This is like an album for us. This, this should have hit. But when I listened to it, it just didn't take for whatever reason. I'm not running the T.I. in 2022 like I probably was in 2004. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, or I must say, I have listened to T.I. In, in quite some time. But yeah. Ross? Ross is my guy. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Nobody no, makes you feel more luxurious. <laughs> mm, I, don't know, I don't know if you saw the video of over the weekend. He cut down his own trees. The guy yeah, was charging him a thousand dollars a tree. And he said, I'll cut down my own fucking tree. <laughs> I saw that he was trending uh for doing that. Um, should we do our this or that now, Timmy? Sure. So my first one is clips or the roots, Tony. Tony, this is a, these are for you. We're gonna just pest you for them. And I want to say when we did our this or that, uh we I don't know if we're we're not ranking these. I'm filibustering yeah. to give you time here. Oh, I don't know if we're ranking these necessarily, but I will point out that when we did our episode uh, with Alana, Ethan wanted this acknowledged, and I failed to get to it, that he mm-hmm. did way better on this than Alana did. Uh, and I will say <laughs> that Alana did not answer like three or four yeah, of them. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, there are a lot of reasons to get on Alana now, but we can get to that another time. Tony. Alana Alana is a macro person. She's a macro person. She <laughs> enjoys the vibe of the music. Okay? No, we, the threw, vibe. we threw we threw like five Chicago artists at her. She was kind of like, ah. I don't like any. I'm like, what? It was like, nah, you know, basically. It's hard. There's a lot of new school, a lot of new school right now. I don't know who you threw at her though, but there's Shout a lot of new school. Mick Jenkins. Okay. Uh, Lupe, Common, Common, Lupe, Common. Chief Keith. Chicago, oh, Chicago Keith, artists. Keith. Keith's an institution, bro. You ain't gonna get no <laughs> Keith slander out of me. I listen to that. I I listen. I just recently, as weird as this sounds, um, I come from a mixed household. Like I'm a I'm a white child. Obviously, I'm very pasty right now on this camera. <laughs> yes. Uh, but my stepfather uh, is black, so I come from a mixed household. I was raised ah. in my whole life. But oh, okay. you know, Charles played a lot of Jada Kiss. I'm, I'm a huge Jada Kiss fan. Nice. So oh, okay. we we weren't we weren't playing a lot of the roots. I'm, I'm just finding the roots now. Like in my 26 year of life, I'm just That's finding fine. the roots. That's fine. Like I was I was going through a tough time in college, and the roots just like touched me, bro. I was like, yes, yeah, so I'm a oh, my, it's yo, crazy, bro. Erica so, Badu. I'm finding Erica Badu too, and like it's so, crazy. Wait, the Soul Aquarians, that that, that oh. era of the Soul Aquarians, Badu, Common, Dilla. Mama's Gun is my shit. Yep, mm. the whole Facts. the whole album straight Facts. through. 
I love Hold Didn't You. I can, listen, I can listen to Didn't You Know at any point. Yeah. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. I can just put on Mama's, Mama's gun and light a candle and just pour some whiskey and just five out the rest of them. I need to start lighting more candles. Maybe that's I'm telling you, look at the lighting, bro. <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> it's magnificent. It smells great in here, too. The vibe is immaculate. So now you brought up Kiss. Kiss or Styles P? Wait, hold on, hold on. I just want I to prob- answer. I'll I just probably want- take clips. Uh, so I'm taking the roots by far. Okay, okay. Yeah, go ahead. So, I, as, so I like the it, clips, but I'm taking the roots by far because Black Thought is a motherfucker. Go ahead. Monster. Mm. Jada Kiss or Styles P? No, nah, I'm gonna take Kiss, bro. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. take Kiss, and don't and like that's not the shit on Styles. Like Styles is that man too. And hey, listen, that verse is just went to go show you, man. D Block ain't nothing to play with. D Block is not, even in 2022. D Block is nothing to play with. We outside. So, hey, it's, it's it was lit. It was lit. That freestyle lives on my phone that he yeah. that he pulled off of the verse that lives there. Um, but yeah, Jada. Okay. Go uh, right. Rank these genres slash subgenres. Ready? All right. Drill. Mm-hmm. Melodic rap. Trap. Nineties hip hop. R and B. And white soul. White soul. We all know what white soul is. I don't even gotta say it. You know yeah, like, you hear like, it. You know what like, I'm saying? Like, like Robert oh, Thick like, and Tim like, like, yeah, I was about to say, like Robin <laughs> Thick. Like, is that white soul? <laughs> Lost like, you. I mean Maya, that's a banger. Like, Maya like it's blurred, like, like, like it's like, blurred like, lines. Yeah, white maybe, soul. Uh, Barry Manilow, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah, oh, oh you going okay. to oh, Justin okay. Timberlake when he gets really like really in his singing in his singing bag, you know what I'm saying? Well, I, you got that lost with that. That's gonna be in my head all day, bro. <laughs> um, it's it's on. We started top or bottom? Top, top. It's R and B up top, always, forever. Okay, so day I die. Day I die, bro. Um, we're we're gonna get to that in a second. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm my R and B bag is deep. We can we can roll. Uh. <laughs> And then Timmy, I want to go. Timmy, that's all you. You're the R and B guy. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. a little too. I'm a little too aggressive. The homie. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brian is, yeah, Brian is too rough. Hey, too rough. <laughs> hey, you know it's funny. Brian's camera was out of focus. He was blasting 504, and on the way, all the way, he was. I, I noticed. <laughs> I noticed. Uh, I was listening to Fabio for it earlier, though. Yo, yeah. Fabio, that that new that that New York City, please. That, <laughs> hey, um, then I'm probably gonna go. I'll probably just take all of melodic because that encompasses so much. Um, yeah. It's more it's more open than 90s. And then y'all going to hate me. I love 90s hip hop. I really do. No, I that's my it. shit. That's my number yeah. one. That's yeah. my number one answer. That's Brian's like okay. bike. That's Brian's bike. That's yeah. the, 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 Nas. You know what I'm saying? Jay-Z. And yeah. Black Moon. Don't get me fucking. Helter Skelter. Don't get me fucking started. Oh, uh, I, I got can't... a fucking hoodie with Prodigy's fucking face on it. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit is right in my closet. I didn't wear it today because it's you know I just wanted to wear it. Some, it's, I, well, look, it's all missed opportunities. I could have wore a fucking jersey. I didn't do it. I, I should have. <laughs> <laughs> I but I will take melodic. You give me Cole and Kendrick in that category probably. And then I will take '90s rap. Uh, and trap and drill is kind of wild because in some ways they're similar. Um, and in some ways they're not, which is yeah, like when you like yeah, yeah. I no, I, I hear what you're saying though. I'm gonna probably take drill, bro. Stormzy's really grown yes. on me a lot. London yeah. drill, yeah. 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 <laughs> Dave and Stormzy and like, did you like? So Dave's, did you listen to Dave? You listened to Dave's album that came out last year? Yeah, I did. I did. That was my album of the year that came out last year. He's good, bro. He's so good, Dave. If you remember, Dave, you know. Um, People who listen to this, Dave, if you watch Top Boy, he has an annoying fucking character in that show. But he has a great character in that <laughs> Wait, show. Who is which, which which character in in, in uh, Top Boy is Dave? Da- he's um he's a dude that gets out of jail. His name is escaping me on the show, but he gets out of jail to fuck with Jamie or whatever. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, he get he okay. gets the he gets the uh, spoiler alert. Spoiler I, alert. I listened, spoiler I listened alert. to Dave, but I didn't know how he looked. Ah, okay. He get what's his name on the show? He gets the burn on his face. Yeah, yeah. this is this is all for reservation for me. I've never watched Top Boy. Hey, oh, season, as, season. As, as, a, as a Drake fan, you should because he produces the show. 
I know. Me. I think I know, he just put I've his name on it. But all right. Well, that's just like Euphoria. Just like Euphoria. Drake Drake is a producer for Euphoria. Yes. Wink, wink. Mm-hmm. Yes. I right have, now, Drake has. And two, I haven't watched that so either. Euphoria. I haven't watched tonight. Euphoria either. Euphoria ends tonight, and Top Boy mm-hmm. starts next week. Drake is going to see the whole bedding residuals for the next two months. I haven't watched Euphoria because it seems like kids are just drunk and fucking each other. So I'm, and high and high. Yeah, like I I <laughs> I don't know if I. <laughs> I don't know like, if I want to go through Modi. That, but It's Modi, Brian. Modi. There you go. Modi. Modi. Yeah. Fucking annoying motherfucker on top yeah. of it, but a great character. So, Tony, your ranking was R&B, uh, melodic rap, 90s hip-hop, drill, trap. You didn't rank White Soul. Is White Soul last? White Soul is probably last. I don't know how many times I'm popping open Barry Manilow. I, it's a lot of appreciation. <laughs> I, I appreciate Barry. I'll tell you what. Here's, here's something. If y'all gave me White Soul at Christmas time, we might have to talk because those <laughs> Michael Bublé records smack. Bublé! <laughs> they they smack. I'm telling you. There's a short list of acceptable Chris, uh, Christmas music. I'll take I'll take Michael Bublé though. Mm-hmm. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. A lot of the acceptable Christmas music is in Spanish though. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm oh, gonna absolutely. I'm gonna throw that out there too. Uh, Drake reportedly spent 1.2 million on Cinnabon last year. That was a report that came out today. <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. What's the most mm-hmm. left field thing that you'd spend a ridiculous amount of money on? 1.2 million. I think Timmy's gonna have a great answer to this, like a great cultural answer. <laughs> <to this. laughs> One point. The money million. doesn't have to be a million dollars. Yeah, it could be like five figures or something. I'm, I'm assuming it. we're excluding women just in yes, in yes, general. Okay, yes, all right. Yes. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. All right. We're not, we're, uh, not gonna, we're not gonna we're not gonna go down that rabbit hole. Whatever. Look, everybody's paying for something well, because everybody. Brian, for Brian looked like he has some demons right there. I, I <laughs> no, didn't mean no, to open no, up no, a no, Pandora's no. box, bro. My bad. I would buy a very. I would buy like a. Exclusive twenty five year old with age whiskey for like a couple of grand. Like I'd buy a, like don't even drink it. Like just to say I have that shit. Oh, uh, that because I collect shit. You. I collect shit. Yep. I I collect like I have a vinyl I collect. So I'd buy like a, like the a thirty year old whiskey that hasn't been opened and like I I drink it like right before I die or something like that. Like something stupid like that. I've made some ridiculous stupid purchases that that I reached for in my life. Like um. Mm. I remember I remember buying like a Gucci shirt. I had no right at the time to purchase, <laughs> max out a credit card to do it. One shirt, a t-shirt. Uh I remember doing all kinds of stuff. But there's a there's an app, okay? And it's called uh Dragon Ball Dokkan Battle. All right. Oh, anime. <laughs> and this this yes, absolutely. And this this app I put in my entire life of playing over the course of like I think 10 years, I put over 4k into and every time i think about that my soul gets crushed uh, i feel like a terrible human and i feel like the people around me don't deserve to love me the way that they do but it's what i did my purchase would be i've always said this look i think i i think i'm doing well so far in my career right but mm-hmm. if i ever get to a point where i'm like doing really really well the first thing that I'm getting is a driver. I don't want to <laughs> fucking drive nowhere. All right. In New York City, especially, like, nah, I know. All right. So if 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 I could afford it later on in my life, if I'm able to get a dog heist to be on TV, Timmy, <laughs> first thing I'm doing is getting a driver, a driver. <laughs> and putting him on a salary, him or her on a salary. Driver, that is happening. Don't need a chef. Pick, pick, pick me up. Don't need somebody to clean or whatever. Just so I, have, I actually would pay for a, a chef. I was, I was thinking, but thing like that, I'd pay for a chef. You'd pay for a chef. Yes. You wouldn't mm-hmm. have to go too far though, right? Like, yeah, you got, got some friends. I got homies. I got homies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just oh sure. yeah, yeah. We we can get to that another <laughs> time. But that mine is absolutely a driver. Give him a salary, all that shit. Um. Oh, this is this is the one Timmy wanted me to get to. Uh, Tony, rum and coke, coke wrap, cocoa butter, or actual coke. God, I'm sure we're talking about Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> like I was watching Tony's face. Tony's like, where's this, where's this going? Ricky, this one, this, this, this one. one. <laughs> Tony's like, where's this going? Rum and Coke. It's like God Coco, damn, I Coco Coco Mark that, on. David. <laughs> so we just got done talking about Euphoria too, bro. <laughs> 
I was, I'm sorry. Can you run the list again, sir? <laughs> if you really want to choose, you know, you could you could plead the fifth on this one. I'll allow it. Uh, no, well, Timmy, Timmy, I think you're gonna pick rum and coke, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, rum and coke, coke wrap, cocoa butter, or actual coke. I didn't say rank them. I just said pick. Oh, it's rum and coke. Uh, I kind of lied to you boys, and I, I look. I want to, got. I want my soul to be clear and everything. I, <laughs> I did lie to y'all. Um, there is no wine out in that kitchen. There is not a single bottle. I drank it all last weekend. Okay. <laughs> what What is out in that kitchen is a healthy bottle of Captain Morgan and a two liter of Coca Cola. That's what's out there right now. Um, so I used to be a, a very good rum and coke guy. Until three years ago, my father-in-law told me that instead of getting all that sugar and coke, drink ginger ale. And it's much, mm. it, it goes down much nicer. Ah, so I, I had Jack Daniels and ginger beer or ale earlier. So I want to ask you, was Captain Morgan or Doers? Hmm. I, ha- I can't have an answer to this because I don't drink, so you know that. <laughs> it's tough. It, you know what, Timmy? In my entire, like, drinking life... Uh, I have realized that you don't need to mix these high fancy stuff into cocktails, right? Especially it's with bourbons. By, by itself, by itself. Yeah, by itself, I'm probably not drinking Captain Morgan. That probably tastes like battery acid by Facts. itself, uh, if I'm if I'm being honest. But like with bourbon, a lot of people, I drink, my favorite drink in the world is an old fashioned. I think I, I'll go 20 miles to a different bar to grab me an old fashioned. It's beautiful. Um, but you don't need the fanciest bourbons to pop in there. You don't need the fanciest rums to put in cocktails. But a good rum and coke on a hot day out by a beach or a pool is a godsend. That's interesting. I see. I'm not a drinker or a smoker at all. I have. You're said blessed. I, I could. Yeah. <laughs> no I vices. Just this is not. This is not my thing. Right. Um. I have no problem with it. Like my whole entire circle does either or yeah. both. So I smoke cigars and I drink whiskey. So I just my was, my family was, goes yeah. ham. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm cool. Yeah. Like it's just not really. Brian, but you like, won't be looking at us in caskets in like 20 years and be like, yeah, that's <laughs> no, what I'm doing. No, no, no. Hopefully not. No. <laughs> <laughs> but but like I say all that to say, I could absolutely see myself becoming a wine guy later in life. You know, I can I mean? see that. I, I, I can, can absolutely see that. wine. I could see, and I have said, look, if I get. God forbid, we'll knock on the table, I'll knock on wood rather. Uh, if I have like some medical ailments that I need to take care of later in my Marijuana. life, yeah, I'm, I'm popping edibles before I pop yeah. pills, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Facts. Like, I, <laughs> Facts. I'll get the medical, I'll call up Al Harrington, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Somebody that got their own shit, that good shit, and I'm taking uh edibles or whatever. I'm not, I'm not doing the, the 50,000 pills and ordering yeah. them to the crib, I'm not doing that. We have any more, Timmy? Um, Drake or Kanye? Oh, yeah, because I can't speak on that last guy. So, yeah. Uh, t- uh, Timmy, why do you hate me, bro? Like, what did I do? <laughs> what did I do to offend I you? Ask the tough me... questions. I asked this... the tough questions. I have on, on Spotify, you know, what did you listen to all year? It's always, it's always Drake. I'm in the top 0.01% or whatever. And then it's always after that. Yay, and after that, Jada or Jada and Yay. So this is tough. Mm. I'm gonna take Drake. Uh, Drake will get you through any mood, uh, any situation. Uh, if you need to cry, if you need to laugh, uh, I he's got you. So I'm gonna take Drake. I don't even know how to he's, follow he's, that he's, up. He's, he's, like that. <laughs> he's, he's just like that, Brian. He's just like that. Uh, espresso or cafecito? Uh, cafecito. Okay. That's just you know, so I gotta ask the Miami question. I ever go? I'm look. I'm going to Miami at some point. I don't know when. There's a few I'll cities. Be, I gotta I'll get be there to. next week. I gotta get. I'll, I gotta see, get I'll, I'll see you soon. Miami. Hopefully. I haven't been yet. I've been to Orlando. I've been as to a true boy. As a true boy, weekend. Yeah, true port though. Know. Oh, speaking of, we beat Cube 65-62. Woo! There you go. Good, Woo! good shit. Only by three. Not great, but look, when they come to San Juan, we're gonna beat that ass. I'm telling you, <laughs> June, July. Look, we qualify. We qualify for the World Cup again. All right. Need this program to turn around. Uh, Timmy, take us home before. before so thank like you crazy. for then the conversation coordinator coming through and guiding the vibes to us today. This is a tough week for the Miami Heat, but again, we us we, we're realist, we're realistic, we're we're macro, we're enjoying the ride. Like we like good competition, so we're yeah. not gonna... adversity will bring out the best in us. Right, so and bring the, out the, the best. main thing is the main thing is enjoy your life, people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like me, and, me and Brian be like, wait, these guys are. It's, it's two o'clock in the morning, like go to bed. 
<laughs> yo, dog, like, yo, sometimes when Kyle Lowry misses an open three, it's just not that serious. You know what I mean? Like, you, you know what I I'm mean? I'm like, wait, like, their blood pressure cannot be right right now. Like, it's it's, it's four o'clock in the day. Go go to work. It's not that serious. <laughs> go to work. Timmy, Timmy said, get a job, bro. Go touch grass. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> go, go to talk work. talk to your family. Play <laughs> chess. Talk to your family. Yeah, watch porn. Go play porn. some checkers. <laughs> Do Something. some play video games. You know but, what I but, mean. But jokes aside, man, me too. Send Tiana Trump something on OnlyFans. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, Elizabeth can't bitch. That's more your value. I'm, I'm never gonna be up to work after this, right? <laughs> like I'm done. Like my career is over, right? <laughs> no, man, you're good. You're good. So thank you guys. Thank you, Tony, and we'll see you next week. And I think you might bring in an, an, an analyst next week to break down these four games. So stay tuned to Five Reasons Spots, Spaces and Spaces. We are the Bahamarico boys and peace out.